Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Hidden and Dangerous 2. Which I believe released in some countries actually had a subtitle. Uh, it was uh, A Courage Under Fire or something like that. So, um, yeah, run a bit of trivia. I only found out that fairly recently as well. So, anyway. <coughs> Let's get this campaign underway, shall we? I have picked three very lucky team members. Or possibly unlucky, depending on how this all pans out. Um, I picked some team members, three of them. You'll find out who they are in a minute. So let's do this. We did our tutorial, and so now, now we begin the first campaign in the Arctic. Operation Snowball. First strike. Lofts, March 4th, 1941. Time, 1948-54. Very precise. On location, contact the liaison who will take you through the patrolled area to the vicinity of factory complex. The goal is to clear the area of all enemy and locate the entrance to the underground. So we're going to go raid some underground facility of some sort. Uh, basically that's the gist of it. That's why we're here. We're going into Norway. That's where this is. And uh, we're hopefully all not going to die. Uh, I'm going to try not to reload as often as I can. Um, on the harder difficulties, you actually have a set number of reloads that you can have permission. Um, this, we're playing on normal, so we're going to probably have as many as we want. But I'm going to try and do it as little as possible. Um, I will reload if my character, i.e. the actual guy called Jingles, dies. Since I'm going to be controlling him, really, for the mo most of this. Apart from a few lo specific points where I switch to maybe another character. Um... So yeah, but other than that, if a team member dies, I will do my best not to reload unless they die at a really awkward point where it's critical to the mission that they survive because they, for say, happen to be carrying a specific piece of equipment or whatever. But anyway, yeah, we're going to go raid some factory in the Arctic. It's going to be fun. Let's go. Alright, okay, so that was the little intro cutscene. Um, you'll see how it plays into the mission later on. Basically, that chap in his Spitfire got shot down, and um, that's going to affect the mission. So, anyway. Okie doke. So, this is where I get to do the big reveal, I guess. And, like I said before, don't worry too much if you didn't get picked immediately, because chances are someone will die and they will need to be replaced so I will then draw another random name from the list and you know we'll see who replaces them but for now first chap on the list is Andre Baker who also actually requested that if he was chosen that he could be the team medic so that's what we're gonna do so where is the medic guy yeah there's this there's a whole bunch of ones which have proficiency in first aid but this guy's easily the best, so I tend to pick him first. So, that's going to be... Oh, 
Hang on a minute, I think we're going to have to take you out of the list before I actually rename you. Right, okay, so. Well done, lucky winner. Try not to die. Um, next one is Waltz Z. Uh, now, say, so we've got a medic already, we've got the team leader. Now, there's two more we kind of need. We need one who's good at stealth. And we need one who... Then we have a choice between one that can either carry heavy weapons, and can basically just carry loads and loads and loads of stuff because they have high strength, or we go with someone who's really good at shooting and we have a sniper. For this particular campaign, I think it would probably be better to possibly pick the guy with the heavy weapons because we might need that, but I don't know. It's very difficult to say. It's kind of difficult to choose between those two, but we will definitely need someone with stealth for this campaign. We will definitely need that, and you'll see why later on. Um, so, uh, let me try and remember. Which one is the stealthy one? I think. It's another chap with a moustache, as I remember. That's this guy, yeah, William Broadhurst. Stealth, 80%. He was a policeman, apparently, prior to that, so... I don't know why his stealth is so high as a result of being a policeman, but there you go. So... Waltz. Your team member number three. And the last one... I'm probably going to go with the, the 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 heavy weapons guy because my character already has fairly good shooting, 73%. He's 70, he's 71. So it's not as if we, we can't hit the broadside of a barn if we need to. Um, it's just sometimes nice to have that one extra guy on the team who has a little bit of an edge when it comes to shooting shit that's far away. But we're going to go with this guy, George Wingate. He has strength. 34 kilograms as compared to 23, 25, and 25. So this guy can carry a hell of a lot of crap. You know, this guy is like a walking, talking pack, pack mule, basically. That's why we're taking him, you know. Um, he's got good shooting as well, which is always nice. Average first aid, um, average stealth, average lock picking, you know, all the rest. Yeah, the only problem with uh, this guy here, the stealthy chap, is that he's rubbish at lock picking, which is a bit of a shame. But hopefully, he won't have to do too much of that. Um, lock picking's not really a big deal in this game, I think, really, honestly. The the bar here, like, your lock picking skill pretty much just changes the speed at which you can pick locks. So everyone can pick locks, no problem. It's just it's just a case of how fast can you do it. So it's not really a big concern. So anyway, final team member is Magic44887, four, four, eight, eight, who henceforth shall just be called Magic. Um... So yeah, you are lucky winners, and well done, you were welcome to the squad, and again, try, please try not to die, um, because you will be replaced, and I probably won't load the game again, unless it's a really awkward point, like I said. So there we are, we have the squad, we have the team leader, yours truly, with a magnificent moustache, we have Andrew Baker the medic, we have Waltz the stealth expert. And we have Magic, the heavy weapons guy. So. The reconnaissance flight, which returned from the northwest coast of the Lofots, brought back images of an unknown facility south of the Samsung port. According to the images, it may be an oil refinery under construction. However, the Norwegian resistance fighters suggest it could be something else entirely. The facility above ground could be just a decoy. It may be that it's a top-secret research facility whose main part is built underground. Your task in this mission is to conduct a detailed survey of the facility and its surroundings. In carrying out this operation, you will have to suppress all enemy resistance in the area. During the reconnaissance flight, the accompanying fighter pilot was lost, so you have to find out what happened to him. According to the weather forecast, there will be high winds and a heavy snowfall, so the drop will not be easy. This is the planned drop zone. From here, you will proceed east, where your guide, Sigurd Vesar, the Norwegian resistance fighter, should be waiting for you. As one of the residents of the nearby fishing village, he is familiar with the area, and, depending on the situation, he will be able to help you to determine the safest way to the facility. The facility is closely guarded, and your first task will be to kill the guards around the perimeter fence. Next, you'll have to clear and survey the entire area. You can also expect German patrols and reinforcements, which will have been put on alert by the crash of the Spitfire that accompanied the reconnaissance flight. 
So, be on your guard and select your equipment and weapons carefully. The mission objectives are clear. Contact the Norwegian resistance fighter. He must stay alive. Get into the facility. Kill the guards around the perimeter fence. Clear the area of enemy units. Survey the entire construction site, locate the entrance to the underground complex and gather your team at this place. Good luck, gentlemen. Righto, okay. All pretty straightforward, all things considered. However, there's lots of crazy variables in this mission that can determine the way it pans out. And, uh, well, you know, we'll see how we get on with those as we continue into the mission. Now then, oh my, it's a while since I've seen this screen. Okay, um, I will, as a general disclaimer at this point, say that if everything goes horribly wrong, it's probably my fault because... Well, it's a long time since I last played this game. I know this game very well, or at least I did, but yeah, it's been years, so I'm kind of relearning everything here. So anyway, here we are. As you can see, we've got all our mission and critical equipment already with us, loaded into our inventories. These are our different inventories. We click on the team member and as you can see his equipment. There are a bunch of um, preset equipment sets we can pick from. They're all rubbish, though, so we're not going to do that. Um, we can just show the soldier stats just to make sure we're giving the right stuff to the right guys. So there we are. Like we are going to need for this mission wire cutters, and we are going to need a camera. The camera, we're not going to give it to you, Andrew. We're going to give it to. I'm going to take it off you completely, and we're going to give it to Waltz. He's going to be the one that needs the camera, so it should be listed in additional equipment. There we go. So yeah, he's going to have the camera, although putting it in your pouches is a bit of a waste of space. We're not going to need it straight away, are we? And it's taking up space that could be taken up by, say, a grenade or a few extra magazines of ammunition. So, everyone gets a backpack. That will increase our weight. However, it will also increase the amount of crap we can carry in the long term. So, first of all, wire cutters, backpack. Camera, backpack. We're not going to need them... If the situation demands, we can rifle through our backpacks quickly and get them out again. But we're not going to need them immediately in the same way we may need a grenade or some ammunition immediately. So, I'm going to have some binoculars. I do, I do believe I would like some binoculars, yes. Useful things. We have compasses. These are essential. Never leave your house without a compass in this game. Everyone needs a compass. A compass will appear in the top left of your screen and it will indicate on it, well, once uh, once squad members have spotted enemies at least, it will then indicate on the compass as a red dot where those enemies are around you. So a compass is pretty freaking vital, you know, you're going to need that, otherwise you're going to constantly get ambushed and shot at by people you can't see and so on and so forth, you know. A compass basically allows you to take advantage of the fact that your team members are keeping a lookout in addition to yourself, so that that's what that's about. Um, a large first aid kit. We're going to take two of these, but both of them Andre is going to be carrying. Uh, because he can... Uh, he, each med kit basically has a certain number of uses. You know, a lar large first aid kit has a certain number of uses. And depending on your first aid skill, each use will... You know, if, you're if you have high first aid skill, then each use of the med kit will heal more health. So if you give a large med kit to someone crap, they can still use it for the same number of times as, say, Andre here can, except every time they use it, they will heal far less health. So we're going to give both of them, and we're going to probably need both of them over the course of this um, campaign. They go quite far, each one, though. You, there's, a, there's quite a few uses in each one. Um, we're going to give them both to Andre. Everyone else, on the other hand, they're going to have a small first aid kit in case of emergencies. Uh, you know, in fact, I'm going to give the rest of these ones to Andre as well, so he can dole them out as the situation demands. A small first aid kit is kind of an emergency one that you use once and it's gone. You know, you instantly consume it and it disappears, basically. So that's what that is. Uh, and I'll give one of those to everyone in case they are pinned down somewhere, can't get to the medic, can't the medic can't heal them, you know, because he's pinned down or something. So you use that to keep yourself alive in the middle of a firefight. So... Now comes the fun part. Weapons. Weapons, 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 weapons. Pistols. As I said before, you're probably not going to see a lot of pistol usage in this 
uh, game, or at least this playthrough, because pistols are kind of crap, you know. They take up a fair amount of space in your inventory, and it's space that you could be using to take more magazines of ammunition for better guns. So, I will be taking daggers. I'll put them in the backpack for now for those guys. This guy can have one in his pouches just because he's a stealth expert, and he's brilliant at knifing people in the back. Um, everyone else gets one in their backpack as a sort of backup in case they happen to need it at some point. Um, I just, on general principle, feel like everyone should have at least a knife. Um, in case they get in a really bad situation where they have no ammo or something. Uh, we, so that's light weapons. We have medium weapons. This is where most of the weapons you will use in the game come from. Uh, and you have heavy weapons. At this point, we're only allowed to use the Ren gun because, as I said before, the Thompson machine gun is not in here and the BAR is not in here. The BAR would normally be in heavy weapons, I believe. Um, but it's not available to us for some odd reason. Possibly because this is set in 1941, prior to America joining the war, and therefore we don't have access to American equipment, which would make sense were it not for the fact that we can already use M1 Garands, M1 Carbines, and Springfield rifles. So, yeah, don't know what that's about, but there it is. So anyway, weapons, 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 weapons. Uh, right, okay, so we've got to choose from. We have the Enfield Mark IV. It's quite heavy. Really reasonably heavy. It has 10 rounds of magazine, which is pretty damn good. The gunpoint speed, that's the speed of the bullet, basically. The speed the bullet travels at. This bullet, the bullet, and that's a general indicator of how much damage the gun does, you see. Uh, so the gunpoint speed of the Enfield Mark IV is 732 meters a second. That is awesome. That is really, really good. Um, the only thing that's beaten by, really, is the Springfield rifle and the M1 Garand. However, I generally prefer this, the Enfield Mark IV. One, because it has way more rounds per magazine. Two, because it has much better iron sights and it's easier to aim with. And three, well it weighs less as well, that's another plus point, but also the M1 Garand has a very peculiar problem which some of you who are army buffs already will probably know about. Whereby, well, first of all, it has less rounds per magazine than the Enfield, but while it is semi-automatic as opposed to bolt action like the Enfield, so that it'll fire faster, the M1 Grand has a pretty peculiar problem whereby, because of the way the rifle was designed, you can't actually eject a clip that is half empty uh, and use it again later. You have to pretty much fire off the entire clip. I'm sorry, I shouldn't say clip, that's bad. I'm supposed to say magazine. Anyway, you can't fire off the entire magazine. Um, well, no, sorry, you have to fire off the entire magazine before you can put a new one in there, which is actually really, really awkward, as you can imagine. Um, so that's why I tend to avoid the M1 Garand, even though it's not a bad rifle, I suppose, aside from that. The M1 Carbine is not bad at all. The main advantage of that is it weighs very little. It has quite high number of bullets per magazine. It is semi-automatic, uh, but it has a low gunpoint speed, so it doesn't do a great deal of damage, this thing. It does probably enough to deal with most enemies, but it's not great for sniping with, you know. It is good, though, if you're at a premium for carrying capacity, like a heavy weapons guy that's carrying maybe a bazooka with him or something like that. I will often consider giving him an M1 carbine just to lessen the load a bit. Um, or maybe, or even if you're just in slightly closer quarters than normal, where a bolt-action rifle is really not going to cut it. So... We have the Springfield. Nasty American thing. Ugh, don't want that. Nothing to do with it. <laughs> it's not that bad, really. It has a very, very high gunpoint speed, but the problem is it has five rounds of ammunition per, you know, the, well, it can have loaded in it at five, round, five rounds of man, ammunition maximum. And I, I, I said, the reason I didn't say it has five rounds per magazine is the fact that the Springfield doesn't use magazines. This thing is bloody primitive. Like, they, that, like it, that is an old rifle, you know. You have to, basically, you have to, to lo reload that thing, you have to reload each bullet in there individually. Think in the way you have to reload the cartridges into a shotgun in most games. Um, so reloading this thing is an absolute pain in the arse. Aside from the fact that you can't have any, many bullets in there in the first place anyway. It's it's not a good gun. Don't pick the Springfield. There are so many better guns available at the infield. 
Sometimes you won't get the choice. As you can see here, we only actually have six end fields available to us, which is more than enough for us. But some campaigns, you may only have two end fields available, so you have to pick something else for the others. Um, say, for example, here, we've only got two carbines and only three M1 Garands, and only one Springfield with a scope, which at current currently is the only uh, sniper rifle available to us. So we can only have one sniper. We can't give everybody sniper rifles. Um... You do get other sniper rifles later on, like here the Enfield Mark 1 with optics attached, um, which is a superior rifle in my opinion. Um, however, as you can see, we don't have any of those available. We didn't get that yet. Um, we also have Sten guns. They are an excellent submachine gun. Everyone's going to get Sten gun. Well, almost everyone. Uh, they're relatively light for a, for a submachine gun. The Thompson, by comparison, has less rounds per magazine and is heavier. The gun point speed isn't magnificent, but ideally you're going to be taking enemies down with bursts of fire with this thing, not a single bullet. So, it's not really an issue. Um, and we also have a single silenced variation of the Sten gun, which is going to be very, very useful for this particular campaign. So, we're going to be taking one of those with us. It's slightly heavier, and the gun point speed is a bit lower, um, but it is silenced. And that's going to be incredibly useful. So, anyway, let's give people weapons, shall we? I'm going to have an Enfield. I'll take four clips for that. I mean, magazines. Whoosh. I didn't say that. Um, and I'll have some more in the backpack. For now, anyway. Um, I will also probably take a... Sorry, I uh, had to pause the recording there and I've completely forgotten where I was. So, uh, anyway, yeah, I'm going to give myself some... I've got some ammo for that. I'm going to give myself some... Yeah, I'm probably going to take a stand gun, yeah, as a backup weapon. Yeah, okay. you got to be realistic with your ammo at the start of the campaign because there are very few opportunities for you to get more ammunition, you know, for your weapons that fits your weapons. I mean, there's plenty of German weapons lying around, obviously, because you will could be killing plenty of Germans and taking their stuff. Um, however, when it comes to your weapons specifically, yeah, then you've got a problem, because if you don't pack enough ammunition at the start of the campaign, then you're basically going to have an ammo shortage halfway through, which will not be good. So that means you'll have to ditch your weapon, go find a German one, load up an ammo for that, and the German weapon you choose to replace your existing one with probably won't be as good in many cases. Uh, for instance, the German, the standard German rifle, the K-98 uh, bolt action rifle is not as good as the Enfield, so you need to bear, bear that in mind. Anyway, that seems good, really. I mean, uh, we've got explosives as well. Ah, right, yeah, okay, so we've got explosives, dynamite... There's no telling sometimes what you're going to need, so it's sometimes a good idea to take everything. <laughs> so, what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to move a little bit of Sten gun ammo, a little bit of Enfield ammo over to my backpack, and I'm going to shove a couple of grenades in my pouches. I'll take some more grenades in my backpack. Another oh, apparently I can't take any more, so there you go. Look, See, this bar at the top here, that's my carrying capacity. It's completely full now. I can't take another damn thing. So we have two grenades, seven Sten gun clips, ten infield clips, a knife, wire cutters, plus this crap in my pouches. Um, we might have just enough, yeah, here we go, just enough space left for a helmet, which is always a good investment, as I've already explained. Oh, God. Okay, right, I'm going to have to ditch something. Um, there we go. Oh, come on, really, game? Helmet's not that heavy, surely. Apparently so. I can't. I can't even take a beret. That's actually actually ridiculous. Um, I'll ditch another Enfield round. Another Enfield round. Oh come on! You 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 just you you, you got to be shitting me, game. Seriously. There we go. All right, okay. Helmets weigh a heck of a lot more than I thought they did. Right. Well, basically, I'm limited now to two grenades for this entire campaign for this particular character. <laughs> That's lovely. Uh, it doesn't matter. We'll probably have someone else carry some extra grenades as backup. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely taking a helmet 
instead of extra grenades because you know shot in the head pow dead shot in the head with a helmet on you're not dead it's that simple you're an idiot if you wear a beret because well yeah a beret is not going to stop a bullet as you would imagine uh now then can i load up on a few extra clips of ammunition now that's done yes i can brilliant okay fully equipped now then andre Andre, 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 what shall we give you? We'll give you the same, I think. Yeah, we'll give you the same. The Sten gun. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two. A couple of extra grenades in the, the old backpack. Oh, okay, no, apparently you're full. Those med kits weigh a heck of a lot by the looks of things. So, you know what, we're going to take that away. And I will give you some extra ammunition instead. There you go. You don't have a great deal of ammunition, mate. But hopefully that won't be too much of a problem. Um, we'll just get you some more, basically. I'm, I'm counting on magic to be able to carry a lot of extra crap for the other team members here, really. Anyway. Waltz. Waltz, waltz, waltz. Sorry, I had to pause again there for a second, just to make sure that the game wasn't... Like, I was getting some random frame drops, and I was hoping that that wasn't going to result in some desynced sound, because that can be really annoying, but anyway, I don't think it has been a problem. Um, and yeah, we've been recording for quite a while now, and we're still on the preparation screen. As you may have worked out by now, this game is fairly slow-paced, so you're going to have to just be patient, I'm afraid. Um, that's just the way it works. Plus, I'm having to do a lot of explanation stuff right now, which won't hopefully slow us down in the future. Um, so anyway, let's get this on the road, shall we? Walt, you, my son, are going to have a silent Sten gun, which is actually going to go in your shoulder at the minute. Um, yep, yeah, and you're going to have this, the Delisle... CC, which stands for Commando Carbine. What that basically is, is a... It's kind of like a rifle. It's a carbine, really, like it says on the tin. Which takes uh, Colt pistol clips. And basically, it is a silenced rifle. Not a silenced sniper rifle, sadly, but it's a silenced rifle. And it's far more precise than the silent Sten gun, which whose bullets can go all over the place. So if you need to precision take out an enemy, the silence commando carbine is your friend. Uh, we're not going to give you, bother giving you any grenades because you know you're stealth, stealthy guy. You're not going to be using them. However, I am going to give you dynamite, or as much dynamite as I can possibly shove on you. Um, Okay, maybe. Yeah, there we go. I want to try and be quite sparing with the old uh, ammunition for this guy, so the, the lack of generally speaking ammunition is hopefully not going to be too much of an issue. Um, but he is going to have three loads of dynamite on him uh, because he's going to be having to do some sabotage later on. Again. Um, Unfortunately, I don't think we've... No, we're not going to be able to give you a helmet, so... Oh, dear, you, you don't have a helmet either. I keep forgetting. I should do that first. Um, stitch a couple of these additional med packs, and we'll give you a helmet instead. There you go. That's better. All right, you, though, you're going to be stuck without a helmet, sadly. You can't even carry a beret. Apparently, that's way too heavy. Um... <laughs> um but um, that's the price you pay for carrying extra explosives, which you are actually going to need. So we don't have much of a choice about that. Anyway, you, my son, Magic, you get the Bren gun. A lovely, lovely gun. Big, big old heavy machine gun. Well, technically it's a light machine gun, but whatever. And we'll give you a carbine as well, because it's nice and light. We're also going to give you these explosives and some extra dynamite, just to, just to make sure we've got enough, basically. A um, couple of grenades. And, you know, you could have some additional grenades. Yeah, extra grenade in there. How are we doing for ammo? Uh, let's take that out there and we'll give you some... 
brain gun ammo and some more carbine ammo. Alright, so as you can see, we're pretty light on ammo for a lot of these soldiers. I think I'm probably carrying the most. Yeah, I am. Um, which I probably will have to hand out to some of the other team members over the course of this little old mission. It's unfortunately everyone's carrying very specific pieces of special equipment this time around, and that's taking up space that would normally be used for. Um, you know, I don't think we will actually need those explosives now I think about it. That's kind of an anti tank explosive device type deal, that, so probably won't need it. But yeah, everyone's carrying very specific equipment, which is kind of. You know, um, getting rid of a lot of the space we could be using to carry more ammunition, which. And some campaigns is a problem, and sometimes it isn't. Um, right now, though, I'm going to load you up in some extra stuff. Some extra brain gun clips and some more carbine ammo. Yeah, okay, you're not going to run out of ammo anytime soon. Good. Um, right, okay, so. Waltz, unfortunately, like I said, you don't get a helmet. Um, Magic's got one, Andrew's got one, I've got one. Uh, let's hope you don't get shot in the head, basically. <laughs> that's, that's the best we can do right now, really. Uh, additional equipment, is there anything I'm missing? Nope, not really. Uniforms, yeah, we can only choose the British Arctic white camouflage suit set for this one. You do get a way more choice in uniforms in the following campaigns. Like the British Baldur standard here is an item greyed out just because the beret is part of it, which we can pick for some reason, but anyway. Um, that's pretty much everything, that is. That's, uh, that's the whole deal. That's everyone sorted in terms of... Yeah, see, it says down there, necessary items for mission, one times wildcatcher and one times camera. Um, but that's this mission specifically. Unfortunately, it doesn't give you a necess necessary items for campaign um, list. Uh, let me tell you, these explosives, this dynamite here, that is necessary for the campaign. And uh, the game's a bit of a dick because sometimes it doesn't actually give you somewhere to get dynamite from if you didn't pick it up at the beginning of the campaign. So sometimes it's a really good idea at the start of the campaign just to go, right, hey, okay, let's grab as much dynamite as we can carry because we may need it. We may not. We don't know. Um, so yeah, if in the initial campaign briefing this, it mentions something that could be construed as having to blow something up, dynamite's probably a short bet. So anyway, let's go. Operation Snowball First Strike. We are ready for the airdrop to the Lofitz Islands. After the drop-off, we must immediately proceed to find a member of the local pro-British resistance who will guide us and show us where the mission objectives are located. We would appreciate if he could provide us with information on the German guard's placement, but our guide is not a soldier, and therefore we cannot expect such a detailed tactical preparation. In any case, we should soon reach a factory facility where we will have to deal with guards first. According to our intelligence service information, only provisional units with insufficient training and equipment have been deployed to the area. When we make sure nobody can attack us from behind, we start. We will start to search for an entrance into the underground complex. Having found it, we will gather there and one of us will enter the complex to, to do, discover its purpose. So there, there we go. Thankfully, according to the information we've got here, we will be fighting some basically German rookie rejects, and hopefully the gunfighting and sh stuff like that shouldn't be too difficult. Later on, in the later campaigns, you'll be fighting some really seriously tough, hard as nails bastards, including the very, very last mission where the game throws a complete curveball that smacks you in the face that you were not expecting whatsoever, and a bit of a twist. Um, and that's actually an incredibly difficult fight, but that would be spoilers. So for now, let's just get started.